In this video, we'll take a detailed look at two of the most important and challenging fingering embellishments in all of bagpipe music, the Kronlua and the Kronlua Amach. I'll demonstrate these movements for you on the pipes and the practice chanter at different speeds and break them down three different ways so you'll know exactly what to play and what to listen for so you can make fast progress with your practicing and play with greater confidence. I'm Yori Chisholm. I started BagpipeLessons.com with the goal to provide high quality information, products, and inspiration for anyone who wants to learn to play the pipes, regardless of your previous experience or where you live in the world. The video you're about to watch was recorded for members of my BagpipeLessons.com inner circle. Membership in my inner circle gives you complete access to the best of everything at BagpipeLessons.com. Weekly, live, and interactive online classes for pipers of all levels with me and world champion guest instructors. Access to my exclusive lesson library with hundreds of hours of lessons on nearly every piping topic. And personalized support from me to help you make your piping dreams a reality. To learn more about joining my inner circle and to watch and download some more of these great lessons for free, please visit bagpipelessons.com slash membership. And make sure to hit the subscribe button and click on the little bell button to be notified when I post new videos here on my bagpipelessons.com YouTube channel. The Krunlua and Krunlua Amach are used in the final climactic variations of many tunes where the tempo and technical virtuosity are at their peak. It's considered one of the most important piping embellishments and also one of the most revered and feared. The ability to achieve a perfect technical execution of dozens of Krunluas and Amachs at the end of a Pibrock is considered a rite of passage for pipers. If you've tried to learn the Kronlua, you know how hard it is to achieve that sort of mastery and consistency. The Kronlua and Kronlua Amach are different embellishments which are played together. Let's start with the Kronlua. The simplest way to think about a Kronlua is it's two low Gs and two low As followed by an E preceded by the theme note. So the theme note can be any note and the theme notes will change depending on the melody of the tune. But the Kronlua is always the same, two low Gs, two low A's followed by E. Between the two low G's is a D grace note, between the low G and the low A is an E grace note, and between the two low A's is an F grace note. So you'd have some note at the beginning, for example low A, played up to speed, we want to hear the low G's and the low A's, but the grace notes are true grace notes. We want those to be really small. Here's another way to approach it. Let's focus on the timing of the theme note and then the E after the embellishment first. It's a sort of a 6-8 type rhythm and the theme note is twice as long as the E. So just the theme note and an E would be usually the theme note has a G grace note on it. Now let's start adding in some notes of the Kronlua itself. Let's add in a low G. Now 
Now let's add in a low A. Now let's add an E grace note when we transition from low G to low A. Let's take that low A and let's split it in two. So we add an F grace note in the middle of that, of that low A to split it into two low A's. Now finally, the last step is to add a D grace note in the middle of that low G, which splits the low G into two. So all those steps. And there it is. When we speed it up. Another exercise for mastering the Krunlua is to start at the end of the Krunlua. For a lot of pipers, the trickiest part of the Krunlua is getting the control of the F grace note. Typically, it's the F grace note that needs some extra practice. So let's start with just doing some F grace notes on low A. We want that grace note to be as small as we can make it, really small without tightening up the hands. So keep the hands relaxed. Remember the two pillars of good form, minimum necessary tension and minimum necessary height. So keeping the fingers in nice and close and keeping them loose. That's gonna help with your technique in general, but specifically here with having clean, small grace notes. So again, now let's add an E at the end of that. Good, now let's add a low A before that and then add an E grace note between the two low A's. So low A, E grace note, F grace note, and then E. Okay, for the next step, just change that first low A to low G. Now let's add a low G at the beginning and we'll put a D grace note between the two low Gs. Speed up the timing of those two low Gs to match the low A and put a low A at the very beginning. So a low A, and then our two low Gs, our two low A's, all the way up to the E. So that's the entire Krunlua. The only thing we need to do now is put a G grace note on the theme note, that's the long low A before the movement, and then put it into that 6-8 timing where the theme note is twice as long as the E. Now there's a couple special things that we need to mention about the Krunlua, and that is the Krunlua from low G, the Krunlua from D are slightly different. Let's start with the Krunlua from D. Now, if you've played a Torlua from D, you know that there's a 
different grace note that we put in that Torlua from D. Instead of playing the D grace note, we play a B grace note, which is the ring finger. And we do the same substitution of the B grace note in the Krunlua from D. And when we're playing our Krunlua from D, we go to low G, and instead of playing the D grace note, we play a B grace note, and then from there on, it's exactly the same. So, best thing that you can do to set yourself up for success with that B grace note is keep your hands as relaxed as possible. The tighter you get, the harder it will be for that B grace note to come out. That B grace note, is it likes to move with another finger. So we can play C just fine when the ring and middle move together. We can play B just fine when the pinky and ring move together. But when the pinky and the middle finger are down, and the ring finger is coming up on its own, it's really, really important that your hands stay relaxed. Most people can move their ring finger all day long, no problem, but as soon as you tense up, it's locked down. So keep that finger loose. The other special case with the Kronloa is the Kronloa from low G. Now that's a low G theme note. So you might think if you're on low G already, you would just, when you're gonna play your Kronloa, the first low G of the Krunlua would just disappear into the low G theme note because they're the same note. And then you would just play your D grace note and then your EF grace note to low A. But there's a little change there, which is the first low G of the Krunlua disappears because it just gets sort of absorbed into the low G theme note. But the second low G we change to low A. So instead of having in our regular Krunlua's from all, our, all of our other notes, we have two low G's, two low A's. In the Krunlua from low G, there's no low G's at all in the Krunlua. The first low G disappears, the second low G turns into low A, so we actually have three low A's. So what that looks like is low G, and then you do a D grace note to low A, and then your E grace note, F grace note, both on low A, and then up. So it's Now there is a minority of pipers who they do play that first low G in the Krunlua and the overwhelming majority of pipers play it the way I showed you, popping up to low A and having three low A's. The other thing I'll mention, if you're a P-Brock player, you know that the high G is always played in P-Brock with the middle finger down. That's the P-Brock high G. We never play the standard high G in a P-Brock, just as we never play the, the P-Brock high G in our non-P-Brock tunes. Now, the Krunlua Amach is an additional embellishment that's added as the final variation for some P-Brock. So some P-Brocks you'll see there's a variation after the Krunlua and the Krunlua doubling, which is the Krunlua Mach variation. In some tunes it's required, in some tunes it's never played, and in some tunes it's optional. So you're just gonna have to talk to your instructor or find recordings or talk to an expert who knows the tune that you're working on to find out if you need to play the Krunlua Mach or not. The Krunlua Mach variation is identical to the preceding variation. And on specific notes, instead of playing the Krunlua, you play the Krunlua Amach, B, C, and D. Those are the only three notes that have a Krunlua Amach embellishment. If your Krunlua doubling has all sorts of different notes up and down the scale, when you play your Amach variation, you play the entire variation, but on the Bs and the Cs and the Ds, you replace the Krunlua with the Amach. So let's see what that embellishment looks like. The B Krunlua Mach 
is played with a G grace note to B, a grip to B, and then an open E dri. And an open E dri means you play the E dri grace notes, E, F, and then you finish on E, but what makes it an open E dri is that the ring finger that's up for the, uh, the preceding note before the E dri was B, I keep my bottom hand on B. Normally the E dri has a low A. Normally the E dri has two low A's in it. A normal E dri would be this. The E, F grace note followed by E with low A's. But the open E dri is you were already on B just before and you stay on B on the bottom hand so it's So the difference is a regular E dri The open E dri Notice there when I do get to the E at the end even with the open E dri I still have then I have to bring that finger down so it's only open for the duration of the embellishment so what that sounds like, the B, Krunluo Mach, G grace note to B, grip to B, open E dri to E. And then full speed. So the key there is the G grace note to B and immediately to the, to the low G of the grip. It's a mistake to play to open up that B before the grip. You really want to hit the grip and then a little bit of a pause after the grip before your Edri. I think the most pipers, when they're learning the Amach and they're working on that grip portion, they make the mistake of making the B before the grip too long and making the low G's in the grip too small, so it sounds like a big B, a very light grip, like this. We want the opposite. We want a very quick B at the beginning and lots of solid low G. The C Kronluo Mach is exactly the same as what we just did on B, except for all the Bs are replaced with Cs. So that's G grace note to C, grip to C, and then open E dri on C, followed by E. So. Some tunes you'll have just Vs or just Cs or some of each. The third Amach note is D, and it's different. You might think, oh, we just play D grip to D, and then the E dri. But we don't play a lot of grips from D or grips to D. What's an embellishment that we have that we play a lot of in our tunes that ends on D? The D throw. So th instead of a grip, we play a D throw. And here's a little change, something unexpected but fits a pattern that we've seen before. Remember when our D Kronlua, we, instead of playing a D grace note, we played a B grace note? And with the D Torlua, instead of playing a D grace note, we play a B grace note. Well, here in the D Amach, we play a D throw, but instead of D before the D throw, we play B. So the D Kronlua Amach is G grace note to B, followed by a light D throw, and then the open E dri to E. You get a very quick B, a nice solid but light and fast D throw, a, a tiny pause, and then our open E dri.
So one really cool thing about this Amach variation is that you have a mix of these Amach embellishments and the regular Krunlo embellishments because we play those on all of our other notes. Low G, low A, and then E and up. So you get a mix. The reason that mix sounds so interesting and exciting when you get to it is that the timing of the Amox is reversed from the regular Krunglua's. In fact, the timing of the Amox is reversed from all of the other Torlua's and Krunglua's and Lumlua's and almost all the other embellishments that we have in a Pibrock is a long theme note followed by a quick embellishment and then a short note after it. So the regular Krunlua is that 6-8 pattern where you have a long theme note your Krunlua and then an E, and the E is about half the length of the theme note. So it's long Krunlua, long Krunlua. Or in a Torlua, it's a long theme note and then a Torlua and a very cut low way. Theme, Torlua, theme, Torlua, theme. Lumlos are the same way and are some of our earlier variations are dot cut. The Amok timing is reversed in that the first thing that you hold in the Amok is the note after the Amok. So in a Krunlua, you hold the note before the Krunlua, then play the embellishment, and then a shorter E. In an Amok movement, you just hit that Amok movement, and then you hold the E for the rest of the duration. So what you get is this kind of like alternating pattern. So let me just play some Krunluas first, and then you hear when the Amoks come in, you'll hear it's very sort of um, almost surprising or a little bit startling if you're not ready for it. And then the interplay between the Amox and the regular Krunluas is really cool. So that's the Krunlua, that's the Krunlua Mach, one of the hardest and most exciting but most necessary embellishments in all of piping. Hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Stick with it, take things step by step, and you can do it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell button to be notified when I post new stuff here on the BagpipeLessons.com YouTube channel. And be sure to visit BagpipeLessons.com slash membership to watch and download some more videos and lessons like this one for free. Thanks!